Uh, the job, we're back on. All right, you all, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry for the glitch. We, uh, for whatever reason, um, our battery went out on uh, the other camera and uh, we, we had to put a new one up. Uh, also, we, we had some issues <laughs> that we had to work out right here. And it's always the same issue. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, y'all, I'm grateful, too, that we get to have fun. Bible study and reading the Bible and studying and all of that, it should be fun. Uh, it, it's, it's not so serious that you can't smile or laugh. Uh, it, it, it ought to be entertaining. Amen. All right? So, uh the, the, the job of the judge was just like that of the prophets. When, uh, when, when they went through that cycle of disobedience, the judge would come in just like the prophets and, and give a warning to the nation that uh, the reason why they have went into slavery or, or have fell on hard times is because of their disobedience to God, worshiping idols, and God would send someone to, to tell the judges uh, or, or the judges would come and tell Israel what they've done wrong. They would repent and, and they would get back in the good graces of God. And, and then the Bible says, normally it was one generation, one generation away that they would begin to, to slack off. And then the Bible says, and there arose another generation that did not know the Lord. And they started all over again. And God sent somebody to fix them. Uh, we, we, we have to be very careful because, brothers and sisters, uh, I can see God sending another judge. Because here it is, we are, per se, one generation away. We are generally, if, if you think back, we are like one generation from the, the we mentioned this a couple of weeks ago. The generations who was working in the corn in, in the uh, the corn fields and the cotton fields and, and all of that, uh, the, the tobacco fields, doing all of this from the sharecroppers and slavery, and everybody loved them some God and, and everybody worshiped, even even though uh, most people, most of the religions, uh, the Christian religions came through the Baptist religion. They came through the Baptist religion and, and, and kind of metamorphed into all of these different Baptists and then the, uh, uh, the, the, the Church of God, Pentecostal, Apostolic. But most of them, because through slavery, the majority of the people who were taken into slavery were taken into slavery under the Southern Baptists. So when black folks began to have their own religions, they had it through the Baptists. You all understand what I'm saying? So it's not a matter of that Baptists are superior to uh, Church of God or, or whatever. I'm just trying to tell you where this whole thing came from. But here we are, one generation from those who were sharecroppers. And now we have lost our connection, if you will, to God. We got people on TV right now talking about we are our own gods. Search for the God within yourself. They take scriptures like the kingdom of God is in you and, and uh, when you've seen me, you've seen the Father and now they've tried to twist right. the word of God to uh, perpetuate their own lives. We have to be very careful. I can see God coming and saying, I have a judge who's coming to judge you. And hellfire and brimstone, brothers and sisters, we are not past that. Yes, ma'am. That's, that's why it's so important, again, that we learn this work and allow it to become, like you said, come alive in us. Because people will say things, and the first thing that we say, it sounds right. Or we just go along with it because it sounds right. But when you don't know, you go to any, that's what the Bible calls it, any wave of doctrine. You just accept it. And we're going to be held accountable because God would not have us to be ignorant. It's no reason for us not to know like you say, don't just get in this word on Tuesday and Sunday. Just like we eat every day, find some time to get in the word. And it's so, all this new technology, we just have to 
Bible reading. Or, you know what I'm saying, go to the to, to, to the lot of revivals and stuff. But now you can get up in the morning and put it on your phone. You can get up in the morning and you put it on what you guys got that Alexa stuff. But it's no reason not for us to get in God's word. Hey, serious. <laughs> you know, I, I remember when uh, when my parents first got the Bible on cassette tape. I remember when they ordered that. And uh, one of my uncles who could not read and write learned how to read using those cassette tapes and following along in the Bible to match the words with what he heard. And that's how he learned how to read. Where there is a will, there is a way. Amen. So nobody, right now, nobody has to, uh, you don't have to buy the Bible on cassette. You don't have to buy it on uh, CD. If you have a, a smart device, you can listen to the Word of God for free. And you can hear it in any voice and in any language that you want. You can hear it in a man's voice. Uh, uh, they even have celebrities now who they have paid to read the Bible if you prefer to hear it in their voice. So, the only other woman now, we're going to Esther. Man, it's, 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 it's 807. The only other woman in the Bible who got a Bible book named after them, Esther. So we have... Ruth and Esther, the only two women in the Bible who have a book named after them. Uh, Esther was a persecuting citizen under the Persian reign. In the 7th and 6th century B.C., Esther was chosen out of the women of Israel to be part of the harem of King Xerxes. She used her political influence to destroy the anti-Semitic actors who sought to destroy the Jews in Persia. And through her faithfulness, established the Jewish festival of Purim. She was thereafter chosen by Xerxes to be his queen. And she ruled Israel as a queen uh, of a Gentile nation. Now, anybody is asking about what is Purim. Purim is the Jewish holiday and the celebration of the deliverance of the Jews as recorded in the book of Esther. It's also known as the Feast of Lots. Purim being the Hebrew word for Lot. And many people in the book of John, I think it's John chapter 5, uh, they said that Jesus went to a feast. They believe the feast that he went to, and, and there, are, there are so many parties listed in the Bible. The, the, the feast of unleavened bread, the feast, they, they had a reason. They made anything you could think of, they made a party out of it. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Uh, so, uh, like Deborah a thousand years earlier, Esther saved Israel from the consequences of its own spiritual folly and established a safe place for Jews to worship in the land. It was on this basis that Judaism was allowed to flourish under Greek and Roman rule in the centuries to come, and it was because of, it was because of Esther that the ministry of Jesus was able to thrive freely and openly in a public society. You never have any idea what you do and how it sets up generations to come. Mm -hmm. The things that you do. Anybody ever watch the movie about uh, It's a Wonderful Life? Uh, the Christmas movie, the man who decided I didn't want to live and uh, the angels allow him to see what life would be like if he was never born. You have no idea how many people you have touched in your life and how many people you will touch and, and what life is going to be like 300 years from now because of what you've done if God tarried that long with us. That's a question. Yes, sir. This is a word that popped. You said anti-Semitic actors. She helped. Like, what is, what is There were people who were trying, who, who were anti-Jewish. Uh, because Jews were slaves, they didn't want Jews to have any place of power. So there were people inside <laughs> of the uh, the king's society inside of his, his, his camp that was saying, we don't want Jews in here. And they didn't know that Esther was a Jew. She had hid that from them. So it wasn't until they, she found out there was a plot to destroy the Jewish nation. 
and her and her her cousin uncle uh, Malachi, Mal not Malachi, yeah, Malachi, Mordecai. Mordecai. <coughs> her and and her uncle Mordecai put a plan together, and he said, "This is what's getting ready to happen." She says, "If I go and speak to the king, even though he's my husband, if I go and speak to him without permission, that's grounds for being killed." <coughs> Even though that's her husband, she didn't have a right to go and speak to him whenever she wanted to. So she says to everybody, you all pray for the next three days. And you fast and I'll be praying and fasting. And I'm going to go and speak to him. And this is where we have the term or the song even that came. If I perish, I perish. I'm going to see the king. So, you know, here again is... is some great history that comes to life. Uh, now we have Miriam. Miriam was a prophetess and Moses' older sister. So you're, you're, you're asking what, what can a woman do that is significant just besides marrying or uh, having children? We've seen women judges, women prophets, women deacons, because you, uh, you, you have women co-pastors, women evangelists, and even we, when we talked about Mary Magdalene, what we didn't say was, according to the scriptures, what it meant to be an apostle. An apostle was someone who walked with Jesus during his ministry that continued the work after his ascension. The first person that he showed himself to was Mary Magdalene. And then told her, you go tell the other boys that I'm here. And when she went and told them, they said she was crazy. <laughs> you're, 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 you're distracted with grief. She said, wait a minute, hold on. Don't discount me like y'all don't know who I am. That, that was her conversation. If you all read the story, when she went and spoke to them, and they told her, you don't know what you're talking about, she said, have you not forgotten that I walked with you too? Don't treat me like I, I, I don't exist. Like I'm not significant. Like, like, like we both wasn't there. And remember, y'all punks ran when I stayed still. Y'all have to read these stories. You know, they have the, the, the King James Version and the New American Standard and all of that. Y'all need to put it into Ferguson, you know, Saint language. Right. Uh, St. Louis's. <laughs> You know, so when you over read there. the Bible, I mean, when you read the stories in the Bible, they don't come at you like when the pastor is giving you the story. You be like, wait a minute. I think I read something like that, but it don't come across as a story. You know what I mean? It's just like you just read it. So you don't, it's not, you don't see it as a picture, like a story like that. Because I, I, I Listen, stories. you all. I said the very same thing to my wife today. Today. When I read this, I read it. But I have to hear it in order to see it. When I read, I read. But I'm not the greatest reader. People read and, and they, you know, I lost myself in this book. No, no, I, 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 I lost some sleep. <laughs> right. And that's, that, yeah, it, that's it. What I do just like you all, I have my favorite preachers. I have my own pastor who's here. And I listen to his live streams. And, and I watch his Bible studies. And, and I, I used to love when they had, you know, when they had open Bible study, I would go to his Bible study. And I have preachers who I listen to. And when I get most of my messages, it's because I'm listening to another preacher and right. God gives me a message right. while I'm listening to somebody else's message. Revelation more for you. Open yeah. up more. Now, I'm not, yes. I'm not stealing they, they right. sermons. Right. No. But I was listening to T.D. To, to, to Jakes the other day and in the first two minutes of him just talking, he was talking about midwives and God said, the midwife to your blessing. I wrote that down. Midwife to your blessing. You all will be hearing that too. <laughs> Probably within the next month or so. You know, right now we have Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday, but shortly thereafter, if, when I when I say it on Sunday morning, y'all gonna start laughing. Everybody else in the church will be like, "What's funny?" <laughs> I don't get it. It's an entire joke. 
Don't y'all say nothing. Tell them you should have been in Bible study. Right. 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 <laughs> so, uh, Miriam. Miriam, prophetess, prophetess and Moses' older sister. She helped to save Moses when he was only an infant. Moses' mother left him in a basket to protect him from being murdered by Pharaoh due to his being a Jewish baby. When Pharaoh's daughter found Moses and had mercy on him, Miriam devoted herself to Pharaoh's daughter in order to raise him so that they could remain together. We can credit Miriam with instilling Moses with a devotion to the Lord that manifested itself in later days, which enabled uh, his openness to divine encounter with the one true God and his moral conscience with guided, or uh, which guided Israel all the way to the promised land. Now, remember that uh, Miriam helped to save Moses, but she was also an anti-advocate during his ministry. You remember it was Moses or Miriam and Aaron who they tried to get them to turn against Moses and she became jealous and conspired to some degree against Moses and because of that, God struck her with leprosy. Moses went to God on her behalf and said, save my sister. So God brought her back. <clears throat> I don't care how good you are. I don't care how you save the prophet to the nation. If you mess up, God will deal with you. You can save the nation, Moses. And if you mess up, God will deal with you. All the good that Moses did. Man, I would have been hot had I been Moses. I done dealt with all these heathens and, and these ninjas during this whole time in the desert. These people done, done cussed me and fussed at me and threatened to stone me and everything else. And Lord, I went up on that mountain and, 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 and became white and all of that to, to come down here to talk to these uh, things who... who Running around here naked and dancing and done tore earrings out there here to build a cow. I get out of this. And then you tell me I can't go. I would have threw the mother ten commandments. I'm done then. But Pastor, that's what we learn. Just what you said. That's what we learn not to examine ourselves. And like so we try to make it about us. All that that he did, it wasn't about him. He didn't do it because he wanted to do it. He was do it, he done because he was inspired by God to do what he does. God gave him that inspiration, that, that go up to tell it. Because he was frightened. He was scared. But God gave him what he needed to do that. That God could get the glory, not the man. That's why when we do things, we do things and understand. We say, it ain't about me, but we make it about us. We say, Lord, how dare you allow that to happen to me? My Sharon, who are you? Be careful if you ever get beside yourself. God will show you who you are. Yes. Don't ever think God won't put you in your place. Yes. Yes. And but, listen, many people have, have, have said that the dumb thing, Lord, I want to see your face. Yeah. Yeah. No, you don't. No, you don't. That's scary. Come on. That's Come on. You, you don't. There's a reason. What did they say? There is a reason why no man has ever seen God. Yeah. And live. The only way you see his face is when you ain't yeah. If you ever see God, you won't see nobody else. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know somebody say, the, the last thing you see, the last thing you will see will be God. <laughs> so, uh, now, uh, for those who are watching, it's offering time. Uh, if you would like to give, and I don't know, have they changed? Did they change the, the cash app? I, I believe they did. Because it, it used to be New Jerusalem. Well, no, it's still. It's still the same. Was it? Yes, okay, yeah. So, New Jerusalem 19... Dollar sign, New Jerusalem 1977. I didn't know because of the name change. I know they've been changing a lot of things. Um, and for those who might be watching, if you're going to the, the different links on the web page, some of them have changed and we're getting those fixed. But still, I believe you can give to the Cash App at Dollar Sign, New Jerusalem 1977. You can access the Zelle app at 314-368-7378. Or if you're sending through the mail, you can send it to... Uh, 
New Jerusalem, number one, North Dade, D-A-D-E, Ferguson, Missouri, 63135. Yes, ma'am. So, I've been looking up and just seeing different things about like, the angels. Because I always thought the angels were like, you know, they had the beautiful gowns with the big wings. And that is not what I saw when you actually started looking up for like the biblical angels. Mm -hmm. Like the big wheel, but then a wheel and a wheel with all the eyes and the wings. And all the they're all the different things you're saying. God may have to kind of look like that. Or well, well you know, is he scary looking? Look, God is a spirit, right. and God doesn't have a look. Right. It's um, God doesn't carry it's like a, a godly form. Yeah. Now, even the Bible, even though the Bible says that we were made in His image. And after his likeness, which is why some people think that he has the form of a man. But the Bible says God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should have to repent. But uh, most people, they, when you look at what they give us to see as angels, we see the pearly white. And most often... They're white people with, you know, the, the long white or, or, or fluffy hair uh, and, and the wings and all of that. But the Bible says, be careful how you treat people because you could have entertained an angel and didn't even know it. There are people who I have spoken to who have told me things at times in my life that I figured... They could not have come from here. They spoke words of prophecy. Spoke to me in, in one, one night when I was at my wit's end. I wasn't suicidal, but I was angry. I was depressed. I was wondering why is all of these things happening to me. I went on on my, on my motorcycle. I got me, I don't know how I was going to drive with this 12-pack on my motorcycle. I just thought about that. But I bought a 12-pack. I bought a pack of cigarettes. And, and I was going to the lake. And I was going to drink all of these and smoke all of them. And, and probably not a good idea still on the motorcycle. But when I got to the store, this guy said, hey, man. He was on, his mo he was on the motorcycle. He said, you all right? Said, man, t tonight ain't tonight. He said, let's, let's ride. I'm always looking to ride with other riders. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to stunt and we're going to do all this stuff. We rode around and then we pulled over. He said, you look like something's bothering you. Before I could tell him, he told me my whole life. Made me nervous. I'm wondering, is it time for me to die? <laughs> Am I, if you're talking to me like God, maybe I'm getting ready to see him. It scared me to that point. So, Many of us, right, you, you don't know, just like that movie, I forgot the movie with Nicolas Cage, uh, Fallen. Oh, right. Uh, yeah, fallen. A fallen yeah. He, he's a fallen angel. Uh, oh. You will see people and have family no idea. Man. Huh? Family man. No, not family man. Family man. Anyway, <laughs> Nicolas Cage, movie called Fallen. All of these angels who walk the earth, and, and the Bible says the angels are encamped all around us. And, and so there, there are so many things that we have to understand when it comes to angels. And the, the problem is because how we see angels, we also, when we see demons, when they showed us demons, demons were either red with horns like the devil or dark complected. Mm -hmm. we, we have to be careful how Hollywood will try to change the narrative. In the movie Moses, they made Moses was your Brenner, right? If I'm not mistaken. No, 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 no. I, th I don't think it was. I think uh, um, I think Pharaoh might have been. But they, they made Moses. Moses was a white guy. When they talked about the burning bush and, and they showed him, the Bible says that God told Moses to take your hand and put it inside your bosom. And the Bible says when he brought his hand out, it was white with leprosy. 
In the movie, they couldn't do that because they used a white man to portray Moses. And Moses was not a white man. Moses was a dark-skinned man. Remember, all Hebrews were dark-skinned people. I was just going to say that, because like when you said, you see the angels as, as white people, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I just got into my mind, like, Jesus was black, so everybody that he went across was black. Like, all the women we're talking about, they were potentially black. Like, all of these, I, I, I had, I struggled with putting that together, because I've always grew up with the image of white, white. Everything. You have pictures of like animals right. and Jesus in your house as far as like being a black man to way later on. He was a black man with dreams. Like right, so it's like Remember? it's still a reconstruction going on. Yeah, yeah, dreams. Well, well, you know, we, we have to be careful again <coughs> who we allow to dictate. Uh, and it's not so much. Y'all, we're, we're going to lose time. Uh, we still have Sarah and Elizabeth, Priscilla, uh, Mary of Bethany, uh, Martha. Uh, yeah, and, and we can do a part two uh, to at least finish this. Yeah. But um, I love the inquisitiveness that we have because, again, if you don't ask the question, then there is no answer. Yes. So I don't ever want anybody to not ask the question wondering if it's going to hinder the lesson. It doesn't. It adds to it. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the Bible talks about be careful how, uh, I, got, I got to remember where it's at. The Bible speaks of you shouldn't put Jesus into a picture because the idea of putting him into a picture makes him mortal to you. Yeah. And many people, he knew people would try to use that picture to make dominance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Not, not only the, the graven images, but it, it, was, it was during that time when he was saying, uh, don't cast him in the picture. When we were growing up and when we were brought into slavery and all of that, uh, the Englishmen, the white people, made Jesus white to inflict their superiority. Mm -hmm. When everybody who, who went through any kind of seminary and all of that knows that Jesus was a dark-skinned, complexion man. Even with Hollywood and all of the background research that Mel Gibson did for The Passion, with all of the historical accuracy of the passion, why is the one thing that's wrong, the majority of the people in it are white? It's intentional. If you was concerned about so much accuracy, then you would have portrayed him properly. We have to be very careful. And again, I say this because Jesus was black. Jesus was white. Jesus was Hispanic. Jesus was Asian. Or if I can say it in, in, in a better way, God is all of those. Jesus on earth was very specific. Jesus was a dark skinned uh, Negroid. You have Angloid, uh, uh, Angloid, Negroid, and Mongoloid. That's where you get your three black, white, and, and Asian. From those three continents, how everything was populated all over the earth, blah, blah, blah. But here we have this, this situation. Um, God says we were all made in his image and after his life. That means then that uh, for every color of the earth, you have the color of man. And I didn't understand that. When my dad said that to me when I got to Pensacola, I said, this old country bumpkin don't know what he talking about. He been chewing too much tobacco. <laughs> the, the, the juice done went to his head. <laughs> And then I realized, there's white dirt. We have the sandy beaches of Pensacola that goes all through Emerald Coast, completely white. Then we have the red clay dirt. Then we have brown dirt. Then we have yellow dirt. All the colors of man is in the earth. So when God says, from the earth you came and from the earth you shall return, for every color of man there is a color of dirt. The red man, the Indian, that clay dirt, yeah, yeah. it's so synonymous.
So, uh, you all, we, we are one minute past our time. Uh, I'm hoping that, that, that this gave you some insight. Uh, brothers, when, when, uh, uh, to your mothers, to your sisters, to your wives, uh, let them know that they are significant. They don't have to. You, you, you don't have to take second. Remember that you were made from man's side, not from his butt. You was not made from his foot. You were made to be his helpmate, his helper. God gave them dominion. But God made a head for you because we had to understand headship. We had to understand who God is and who Jesus is to us. So God gave us the, the, the standard. Mm -hmm. let, us not, let us not treat our wives as if they are inferior. Mm. Weaker doesn't mean inferior. There were a lot of times in the scriptures where Jesus said, well, God told Abraham, listen to your wife mm. and do what she's telling you. God wouldn't do that if, if, if mm -hmm. she wasn't able to think logically. Women ain't just emotional. Right. Yeah. They do understand some logic too. I do understand, you know, men are logical and women are emotional, but don't discount that a woman don't know how. Uh, when they talk about the virtuous woman, she's the one who's getting up in the morning. She's the one chopping wood. She's the one going to the marketplace. I was wondering, where does the, the virtuous do that? Right. Wisdom was she. She did perfect. So, uh, Yes, somebody, somebody had a hand. Yes, ma'am. I just had one question I wanted to ask earlier, and when you said, don't be afraid to ask your, your questions, it came back up. So, well, take this you too. So, why do we make it seem like women really didn't have, a, a, like, any, like, role? Yeah, role to play back then. You don't really hear anything about women in general. The same reason why they didn't show you no blacks in the movies. Because they wanted you to think that you were insignificant and the only black they showed you was the black man who took the cross of Christ right. to carry him up the uh, uh, up to hell. But almost the question is not how many blacks are in the Bible. Mm -hmm. The question is how many in the Bible wasn't black? That's the real question. And then my last question. Mm -hmm. We talked about this before too for the act.
Men lost their lives out there slaving for their family, working on hard ground. Sometimes things weren't even growing. That burden on them of couldn't feed and couldn't take care of because they couldn't provide. But that's what was put on him for his part. So God gave man. This is how we look at it. Sometimes you got a problem. You think it's so bad till you look at somebody else's problem. When you look at pain, you think, well, it's a hard pain. But you hear people say, I got to have a baby that have a toothache. No, you hear people say that. You know, they go through things because the pain is just as great. When you're in pain, believe me, you're hurt. So we have to look at Lord, whatever you've done. And like you say, I was in your concept when you say, because we think like that at times. And nothing is wrong with that. Like the pastor just said, no question is a dumb question. Never be afraid to ask a question because, listen, somebody else is thinking the same thing, but afraid to ask it. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, God bless you all. We'll, we'll, we'll pick back up on this next week, uh, if the Lord will, and then we'll, we'll also continue it and finish up with the, um, uh, the successful life of a Christian. Thank you all. God bless you. We'll see you next week.